Hello and welcome to Big Picture. I am Vishal Dahiya and today we will talk about Prime Minister Modi's two-day visit to Russia. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will embark on a two-day state visit to Russia on Wednesday. He will participate in the 5th Eastern Economic Forum as the chief guest and hold 20th India-Russia annual summit with President Putin in Russian city Vladivostok. In addition to signing pacts in several key areas, India and Russia are also expected to firm up a roadmap for deeper cooperation in oil and gas sector in terms of exploration, exploitation and purchase. Now, both leaders are also expected to discuss a number of key regional issues, including Afghan peace process and situation in the Gulf region. For more on this, we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests in the studio today. Let me start by introducing the guests to you. Uh, we have with us Mr. Sanjay Pandey, Professor from uh, Center for Russian and Central Asian Studies in Jawaharlal Nehru University, that is JNU. We also have with us uh, Mr. Ashok Sajjanhar, former diplomat who has been in Russia twice. Uh, and we have with us uh, Professor Harsh Vipant as well, the distinguished fellow and head of ORF Strategic Studies. Uh, so let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Sajjanhar, to try and get a, you know, hold of what exactly are we talking about when we look at Prime Minister's two-day state visit to Russia. Now, this is the third time when both Prime Minister Modi and President Putin will be meeting in this year itself. Yeah, so it's a very important visit and I think it uh, <clears throat> underlines the importance of the relationship that when it was first proposed to Prime Minister Modi that he will be invited as the chief guest or one of the uh, guests of honor to the Eastern Economic Forum, he very readily agreed. And uh, it is uh, also, I think, there is a synergy because uh, Pr President Putin has been trying to develop the Far East for the last uh, several years. And this Eastern Economic Forum, this has actually come into the picture since uh, 2015. You know, if you were to look at uh, Vishal, what the Eastern uh, part, the Far East of Russia, what it really represents, it is in terms of area, it is about twice as large as India. It's about more than... 6 million square kilometers. India is 3.2 million square kilometers. So it's about twice as large as India. And the population is just 8 million. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's less than half of Delhi NCR. So it's huge area. And the population is uh, very uh, sparse. Mm -hmm. uh, because the weather conditions there, the climatic conditions are very severe. It's extremely cold. It starts from Siberia, goes right up to the Pacific Ocean. But, of course, it's uh, exceedingly rich in uh, mineral resources, uh, oil, gas, minerals, and also in agriculture, in farming and fisheries. So it has huge potential, and uh, uh, President Putin has been trying to develop this region. So uh, he has invited, there are many other countries who are investing in that region. Mm -hmm. uh, Prime Minister Modi will be there for these two days. And uh, he has taken this invitation extremely seriously because when the meeting between the two leaders took place in Bishkek in uh, June uh, on the sidelines of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, mm -hmm. then Prime Minister Modi had said that we are going to make this into a very successful visit. Mm -hmm. And in, uh, 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 as a follow-up to that, you know, there was also the visit of the Deputy Prime Minister from Russia, Mr. Trutnev, who's in charge of this development of this region of the Far East. And from India, there was a big delegation in the uh, middle of August, 11th and 12th August. There was a big delegation, 150 businessmen, big business who were taken there. And uh, including uh, uh, four chief ministers of four states, mm -hmm. Uttar Pradesh, uh, 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 Haryana, Goa, Gujarat, these four. And the delegation was led by the Commerce Industry Minister Piyush Goel. So they went there and they had, uh, uh, they signed a large number of MOUs. Mm -hmm. Along with the Prime Minister also, there would be a 50-member delegation going. And uh, as you mentioned... In There's an India-Russia business dialogue as well. Business dialogue also will take place. And as you mentioned yourself, there is going to be a five-year roadmap. Uh, on uh, taking the relationship forward in the area of oil and gas. Mm -hmm. You know, what Prime Minister Modi had said is, we need to get out of the traditional areas of cooperation, that is defense. nuclear energy and defense. Mm -hmm. And so, in terms of oil and gas also, there is going to be, because that area is rich in oil and gas. Mm -hmm. The other uh, one or two very significant points would be, in terms of, uh, you know, it's a, uh, in strategic terms, it is a part of the Indo-Pacific. And India's interest in the Indo-Pacific is growing. 
there is also talk of having a maritime connectivity between Chennai and Vladivostok and that might also help us in using the northern sea route from there via the Arctic uh, Ocean to get to reach to Europe. So there are great possibilities whether it is in the area of oil and gas or it is diamonds or it is fisheries because this area is very rich in diamonds also. Mm -hmm fisheries, uh, farming, uh, tourism also there is great possibility. So I think all these areas are going to be explored in a very comprehensive and a very significant manner and this is likely to give a big impetus, big uh, boost to our relations. Last point, uh, you know, we uh, shouldn't also forget that people who are living in this region are very apprehensive and wary of the fact that just across the border you have the teeming millions of uh, Chinese who are also investing heavily in this region and that is why what uh, President Putin is interested to balance what is coming in from China okay. both in terms of uh, money, both in terms of finances as well as in terms of the number of people. So a relocation of human resources from India to that region whether is it also is, on the cards. It's also very much on okay, the cards. Okay, so quite a lot uh, on the, uh, the plate out there and to be discussed and to be brought out as well. Professor Pant, I'd like to bring you in here. And, you know, this entire concept of uh, taking on the India-Russia relationship from uh, the nuclear deal to defense deals to the next level, that is oil and gas and all these areas, the other ones, uh, agriculture, maritime, uh, these, th this aspect of India-Russia relationship, how do you look at it and how do you see this moving along? See, we have to recognize that, uh, you know, uh, Indo-Russia relations are passing through a phase where we have to redefine the scope of this engagement because uh, there have been concerns that, look, we are in a completely new, new in, in, uh, global environment and somehow Indo-Russian relationship for all its historical validity, for all its, uh, you know, engagement at a strategic level uh, was... Uh, you know, feeling lost amidst a plethora of other strategic engagements that India was uh, India was shaping up in its foreign policy matrix. And I think that's where uh, Prime Minister's initiative and in this sense that we need to really have a roadmap for where we need to take this relationship and take it out of that straight jacket of defense and, and nuclear mm -hmm. uh, way which have which tend to define this relationship almost for this generation at least. Mm -hmm. And I think it is it is therefore important to um, as the ambassador was suggesting, to look at new opportunities and in particular if you have been given this opportunity to come and invest uh, in the Far East of Russia, which, which India has been trying to scale up its presence over the last few years. But this is a dramatic uh, move to invite uh, Mr. Uh, Modi as, uh, as a chief guest at this, at this forum uh, because I think uh, there are a number of issues on the table. But primarily for India and Russia, it is about reimagining the relationship that is stuck uh, almost uh, you know in a in a time warp that they, we we still continue to talk almost <laughs> exclusively about defense deals when it comes to indo russia relationship although russia has been a, such an important partner on a number of fronts including in the recent kashmir crisis we saw how important russia can be when it comes to multilateral fora when it comes to our engagement at the, the highest levels of global diplomacy but somehow uh, to take this relationship forward is important because the most important ingredient in any relationship today is the economic dimension mm -hmm. and we are stuck there we have, we have not been able to move uh, and that the numbers are quite low i think nine billion odd um, trade that we have bilateral trade is not significant enough and it's not important enough uh, uh, in, in terms of giving this relationship a push mm -hmm. in, a, in a direction that perhaps both moscow and new delhi need and therefore you saw uh, you know the the informal summit of mr modi and mr putin earlier this year to now this very important summit where i think there is a there is an appreciation at the top leadership level that this relationship needs a boost this relationship needs uh, a new direction and therefore this becomes an important platform because okay. this is not simply uh, you know prime minister would also be having its his annual summit with the with mr uh, mr putin so clearly this would be a very opportune time to have that roadmap in place uh, which is so important now to take this relationship forward okay professor pandey uh, you know clearly looks like uh, as uh, professor pant is pointing out that uh, the idea is to go ahead and redefine the relationship between the two nations and specifically from the economic aspect? Well, uh, earlier bilateral ties, especially between India and Russia, time tested as we call it, uh, we saw it like a cocoon uh, where we felt uh, secure. Uh, now things have changed. 
the global politics and uh, correlation of forces is such that uh, we cannot have such exclusive partnerships. We have to understand that each country has its uh, uh, national interest, mm -hmm. has its uh, regional and global uh, uh, interests and uh, directives, uh, trajectories. And therefore, uh, all countries are trying to engage with multiple partners. Uh, this is a time uh, when countries are building a multi-vector foreign policies. Uh, therefore, both India and Russia are looking at other partners. India is uh, looking at US, more certainly, mm -hmm. and uh, Europe. Similarly, Russia has China, Pakistan. Europe, of course, has been an old uh, partner of Russia. So both have our own uh, uh, prerogatives. Both have uh, our own uh, national interest, according to which we would like to redefine mm -hmm. our uh, partnership. But uh, both countries realize that this is one partnership which remains very steadfast, very stable, uh, time-tested. Uh, economic dimension of the partnership has been lagging behind. In fact, bilateral trade has come down from 10 bin billion plus to slightly less than 10 billion. And uh, there are problems also because of the global downturn, uh, economic crisis, global crisis also because of the sanctions uh, that have been put against Russia by Europe, by US, mm -hmm. uh, following the Ukraine crisis. So in light of these developments, uh, both the countries need to redefine in the sense that we have this arrangement, ruble-rupee trade. Perhaps uh, this can, to some extent, overcome uh, the sanctions, uh, American sanctions regime. Mm -hmm. If we are not using uh, American dollar, uh, then perhaps rupee-ruble can be one way out. Uh, the traditional areas of uh, cooperation, economic cooperation, have been uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, fertilizers, uh, and of course, energy and investments in energy field have really gone up in the mm -hmm. last 10 years or so. In fact, a total of about $23 billion of bilateral investments, 10 billions of Indian investment in Russia, uh, about 13 uh, billion of Russian investments buying SR oil, for example, in India. So this is one field where we are uh, going ahead okay. and going very uh, well. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our own uh, priorities, national programs like Skill India, Skilling India or Make in India. In these respects, uh, there have been talks about how Russia and India can uh, cooperate, even uh, when it comes to uh, the very old defense cooperation. We know the defense cooperation is not just about buying and selling. It goes beyond it. It goes uh, to joint development, uh, joint production. And Brahmos is one example, fifth generation aircraft, another example. We have been collaborating in other fields, but perhaps one area where we can uh, still hope to go mm -hmm. ahead and taking into account uh, Make in India is perhaps if uh, Russians can think of uh, setting up plants in India for building uh, naval ships, mm -hmm. uh, military or otherwise. Russia has uh, special expertise in this area. Vishakhapatnam and others, uh, seaports have uh, our infrastructure is very strong. So in the defense arena, uh, even here, we can think of taking forward our relationship in all to, these aspects. In all these aspects, to a new level, a, okay. an entirely uncharted uh, territory, so to say. Okay. You you mentioned uh, you know defense uh, is uh, one you know uh, aspect of India-Russia relationship which has been ongoing for quite a lot of time now. But Ambassador Sajjan Har, if we look at uh, you know the regional situation in the region specific and as uh, Professor Pandey was pointing out the time has come now that all nations are, have their own trajectories, have their own national interests, uh, their own terms of engagement with other players uh, in a particular region and that's the case with Russia and India as well. So in that aspect how does Russia-India relation move from here onwards to that next level which everybody is talking about? I think both the countries really have to pay special attention to this partnership. You know, when the partnerships are closed, they need close uh, 
watch the need close nurturing also you know you know vishal what we need to keep in mind is that <clears throat> there was a feeling there was a perception some time ago uh, particularly amongst the russians not so much here in india particularly amongst the russian that india is getting too close to the americans and i think that sort of a perception of course we told in uh, russia in no uncertain terms that whatever our engagement with the united states it's definitely not directed ag against russia there are other strategic considerations particularly as far as the uh, you know remarkable rise of china military economic political uh, uh, and its assertive uh, aggressive behavior on our border undemarcated border south china sea indian ocean mm -hmm. so there are those considerations but of course uh, you know the uh, uh, the significance and the importance of the relationship was getting diluted so the last few years uh, we have tried to strengthen this partnership uh, with uh, russia and uh, one of the important uh, uh, i would say milestone was uh, the informal summit at sochi last year in may and i think that in terms of removing some of the cobwebs that has helped a great deal okay so uh, and as far as russia is also concerned i think it's the same thing you know we might say outside people might say that uh, russia and china are in a very close uh, embrace and uh, close to each other but i think as china is growing uh, there is increasing uh, wariness and anxiety uh, that uh, china is uh, stepping on to many of the areas which uh, russia for instance considered to be its own uh, uh, preserve mm -hmm. yes its own domain so uh, you can see that in central asia and uh, the, the way china has been coming in and it's not only econo in economic terms it's also in strategic terms it's also in military terms the way it has been setting up bases there also and so russia feels that it is a, a stronger partnership with india is to its advantage in terms of keeping uh, china uh, also uh, 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 sending out a message okay. strong signal to china and here as far as uh, we have seen the unpredictability of mr trump you know as far as the united states is concerned we understand it's a very very significant relationship it's a very important relationship but we've seen the the turns uh, that uh, his uh, statements have taken over the last uh, several weeks and months and uh, we think that uh, there are so many positives in terms of taking our relationship with russia forward okay. defense is uh, one item the sort of technology that we can get from there okay. is uh, you know we cannot uh, get it from uh, anywhere whether it is the s400 whether it is the kamo 22060 helicopters uh, professor pandey was speaking about uh, the the make in make in india no brambos also make in india you know the first uh, ak203 kalashnikov rifles are going to be manufactured at the ordinance uh, factory in uh, amethi uh, mm -hmm. in amethi amethi yeah in amethi they are going to be manufactured so you know there are a number of these items in the area of nuclear energy also there is no other country which has come to india which has cooperated with india to set, set up nuclear power plants here the six uh, uh, plants uh, reactors nuclear reactors in kudankulam 1200 megawatt each so six would be about uh, 7200 megawatt in all it's all come from only russia okay. and with others you know we are talking with them like you know when the prime minister was in uh, biarritz we spoke about the french uh, coming in here but you know there have been so much of discussion but nothing really happening on the ground so while looking at the traditional sectors of cooperation we need to look forward and i think this uh, visit uh, by prime minister modi is going to chart those new areas and those uh, uh, new territories where, where the, the collaboration can, can be can further uh, moved yes. ahead uh, professor pant your views on the diplomatic and the strategic aspect of that india russia relationship which also will be redefined uh, with this visit and in the days to come as well uh, well see the the the, poli the glo global political environment is changing so rapidly that uh, i think all nations have to be very nimble to to make full advantage of what is happening and i think uh, a glimpse of that you got uh, at the recent g7 summit where mr trump is openly saying that let's bring russia in uh, into that uh, you know in, in make it again a g8 uh, from which russia was uh, shunted out because of after the crimean uh, crisis 
So there is, uh, and the Europeans uh, are completely against the move. So you have a situation where Russia's isolation from the West also means that Russia's embrace with the Chinese have tightened up. So you also have a situation <coughs> where India's predilection becomes even more tougher. Mm -hmm. uh, because India in an ideal world would like uh, Russia and China that are relatively less engaged or relatively both uh, you know, dissociated uh, between the two. So I think clearly now the, the situation where uh, the Russia-China embrace has become so tight for, for many observers, that poses a challenge for India. Now a number of these issues will be on the table because you will have the situation even, even on the Far East. Now Russia wants to diversify and therefore it is bringing in a lot of the new actors there. It is concerned about Chinese footprint in, in, in its Far East and therefore there is a re realization that countries like India who, have, who can actually help Russia balance that situation. Needs, uh, you know. But what, what, will it, what can it do if it is isolated on the global platforms? Mm -hmm. And so I think there is a sense where India needs to reach out to Russians in, in a substantive way. Similarly, I think uh, some honest conversation, after all we are old friends, so conversations around uh, you know, Indo-Pacific. Uh, now, Russians actually don't like the term Indo-Pacific. They still continue to use the term Asia-Pacific. But we are, we have articulated an Indo-Pacific um, uh, policy. Uh, and I think there has to be some conversation around uh, the, the, problem uh, the problems that Russia views, uh, the feels this construct uh, creates. Mm -hmm. And India's own priorities, how they set out, how they are set out uh, with this and other things that India is doing. Similarly, I think on the region, where there have been growing concerns in India that Russians are siding with Pakistan on key issues, although in recent past we have seen Russia coming out very, very strongly in India's support at the global platform. But issues like Afghan peace Afghanistan, process. Afghanistan mm -hmm. peace process, first phase, when the first um, uh, meeting that, that Russia uh, you know, uh, conducted, uh, India was not even invited to that. India made a diplomatic protest. Uh, so I think there is, a, there is a clear recognition that things are changing and therefore that has to be brought back into sync. We are traditional partners, so clearly uh, conversations about these things should not be that difficult to happen. And I mm -hmm. think now that the top leadership, you know, as, as was pointed out, uh, from the informal summit onwards, we are taking a much direct interest, the top leadership is taking a direct interest in the trajectory of this relationship. One hopes that many of these political and diplomatic issues will be sorted out, that the conversations that the Russians and Indians are having about the regional security environment will be much more robust, that, okay. that where we can actually articulate differences, but at the same time make, it, make a case that we need to work together because tomorrow if, if Americans are drawing down their troops from Afghanistan, then on whose shoulders will the burden lie? India and Russia, countries in the region. Mm -hmm. So clearly there is a need for the for the for these two nations who are so close in so many ways to have a conversation where we can actually articulate differences. You know, it, it's all very well to say we are time we have to time tested relationship, but unless uh, the new tests of time come and unless we are we are willing to uh, measure our relationship, uh, you know, in, in the in the context of new um, problems that are emanating virtually every single day, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, the relationship loses its luster. And I think that is that is why it is important to have these conversations at the top level. And that is and why re I think redefine re it. And that is why I think these these you know attempts that the top leadership from both sides is making mm -hmm. to have these continuous dialogue. Look at the look at the you know uh, continuous stream yeah, of dialogue engagement between had. both the leaders. This so is the this third is one in the important. year. Yes, yeah. this is very important. Yeah. Okay, uh, concluding comments from you, Professor Pandey. Well, uh, we have to understand that uh, Russia has had uh, very long-standing ties with uh, two of our neighbors, uh, that is China and Pakistan. So we should not be unnecessarily uh, worried mm -hmm. in the sense that Russia and China share one of the longest land borders in the world. They have had very old, uh, complicated, <laughs> complex definitely, uh, relationship, uh, which has seen ups and downs. Uh, after 2014, of course, in the wake of uh, Western sanctions against Russia, they have moved closer. On uh, many other issues, they see eye to eye. In fact, there are issues on which all the three of us, uh, that is Russia, India, China, see eye to eye. Even on Afghanistan, we have had trilaterals on Afghanistan. We have a joint working group with Russia on Afghanistan on terrorism. Uh, there are various uh, frameworks and platforms through which uh, we can talk to and we have been talking. Mm -hmm. uh, there are divergences, uh, no doubt. For example, BRI, uh, China, uh, China's uh, I mean, flagship uh, initiative, mm -hmm. uh, Russia has seen positively, has agreed to participate in it. Uh, we have not. Uh, on Afghanistan, as I said, we have a joint working group. Uh, there are concerns uh, about the security situation 
uh, post America, especially. But uh, Russians are not averse to engaging with uh, Taliban, although in a very limited way. Mm -hmm. And it's not as if they are going uh, all out to embrace Taliban, but uh, they are open to engagement with them. Uh, we have a slightly different uh, opinion. But when it comes to issue of terrorism, uh, cross-border terrorism... Both nations uh, are on the same page. Bo bo both the nations, including China, in fact, all the three nations are on the same page. Of course, because of divergences on other, in other areas, sometimes this convergence is uh, not highlighted. Mm -hmm. There is scope and need uh, to build on this convergence even further okay. uh, between Russia and China and possibly between Russia, India and China, all the three. Okay. So these are uh, the important aspects of uh, the relationship between India and uh, Russia, as our panelists pointed out. It is a time-tested relationship, uh, something which is built on trust between both the nations. But uh, as our panelists are pointing out, the time has come to redefine the scope of this relationship and the scope of engagement between both the nations, something which leadership of both these countries will try and do in this dialogue between Prime Minister Modi and President Putin at the 20th annual summit in Vladivostok, Russia. We'll come back again tomorrow with a different topic and different set of guests. Till then, keep watching Rajasvara Television.